All right. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon for all of you East Coasters, and welcome to today's webinar, Winning Today's Digital Diner, presented by Justin Mink, Senior Vice President of Franchise Brands at Scorpion Internet Marketing, and Matt Friedman, Founder and CEO of WZ Franchise Corporation, better known as the Franchise Brand Wing Zone. My name is Michael Smith, and I'm on the Franchise Client Development Team here at Scorpion, and I'll be moderating today's presentation. So before we begin, let's briefly review just a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, we did go ahead and mute your line to avoid any background noise, but please, we welcome any of your questions, and we'll address them after the presentation portion of today's proceedings. Just use the questions feature in the GoToWebinar widget and send your messages, and they will come directly to me, and we will build as many questions as we can upon the conclusion of Matt Justin's presentation. All right, so let's begin. I'd like to turn the floor over to Justin and Matt to introduce themselves. Justin, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us. We're excited about this, this webinar, our first really targeting uh, restaurant brand and talking about sort of the trends and what's new, what's important in the world of digital as it relates to, to restaurant, multi-unit restaurant brands specifically, and franchises even more specifically. So my name is Justin May. I'm Senior VP of Franchise Brands here at Scorpion. Uh, I am incredibly passionate about helping restaurant brands like Wingzone help uh, carve out a competitive advantage by leveraging the power of digital in ways that I think are underutilized today. I spent my career in digital marketing for both startups and big Fortune 500 companies and have been with Scorpion for about a year and a half. And we work with about 75 franchise brands and about 4,000 franchise locations. And I, I, I'd argue restaurants is as I'm as passionate about working with restaurants as I am with any business. So um, excited for this call. And Matt, I'm going to kick things over to you to introduce yourself and then we'll get rolling. Absolutely. So my name is Matt Friedman. I'm the founder and CEO of Wing Zone. We are uh, about an 85 unit franchise system based in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, marketing and brand report to me within my company uh, as well as uh, some operations and training, and we were actively looking for a partner to really kind of encompass and embody all digital marketing. Um, we're fairly spread out throughout the country, so we do not have a lot of mass media opportunities. So we've always embraced digital, but we really never had it all under one roof. So I'm happy to share my experiences with Scorpion and why we kind of made the decisions and, and excited as we kind of uh, just really launched with them uh, from that capacity. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, and as we go, Matt and I are going to kind of both give you our perspective on some things here throughout the presentation. By the way, just another quick reminder, as, as we go, please ask questions as you have them. We're going to leave plenty of time to answer your questions uh, at, the end of the at, the at the end of the presentation portion of today. But I want to start with just a few sort of high-level kind of philosophical stats, not philosophical stats, but some stats, and then the philosophy around why these are important and why you should care uh, and how these are going to impact your business. In fact, how, how they're impacting your business today, whether you are, are realize it or not. 80% um, of restaurant patrons look for a place to dine using their mobile phone. So... People are your customers and the customers that you may, might be missing out on in terms of being visible and engaging those customers are on the move. And when they're hungry, especially if they're in an area that they're not familiar with, traveling for work, traveling for pleasure, or just looking for something new to break out of the routine, first place that, um, that customers are going is the great oracle of Google, and they're doing so on their mobile device. Uh, using your mobile device and search is kind of implicitly tied together in terms of customers who are looking for local businesses. Um, there's a lot of stats around uh, regarding just about every business category you can possibly imagine in terms of how, how there's just this incredible trend in terms of people using and understanding that your mobile device now knows where you're physically located. And I think that trend is probably, all, I would argue, it's the most remarkable in restaurants. So in general, people who look for anything near me or nearby, whether that's restaurants or a car dealer or a real estate agent or attorney or what have you, has gone up a pretty astounding and jaw-dropping 34 times 
in, in 2011 alone and, and then doubled every year since 2014. And uh, this, this stat might be astounding to you, but the number one near me plus anything search term is restaurant. And these, this is actually kind of funny. I always chuckle when I see this slide because this comes straight from Google. And, you know, it's day parts near me searches. So Saturday morning, you know, movie theaters, car wash, are two, three, Saturday night, hotel, liquor store, Sunday morning, Catholic churches, urgent care, but number one in every single day part is restaurants near me. And that applies to really any type of restaurant or business category now, or, or type of restaurant. For, for Matt and Windzone, when, when he and I first engaged many, many months ago, this is one of the first things that I, I shared with Matt and his team at Windzone was the fact that Starting about 18 months ago, sort of it was the tipping point. And for whatever reason, about 18 months ago, consumers in general started to understand implicitly that your device, whether you're on a laptop or tablet or an iPhone or an Android device, knows where you are physically sitting. And you don't have to use geo terms anymore. You don't have to put wings in Dallas, Texas, or in Addison, or the zip code where I'm physically sitting. All I need to do is put wings near me. And what happened was, in large part because of this incredibly uh, fast trend that just happened all of a sudden, restaurants found themselves in a really reactive state to consumers. So I think some of the more progressive brands might, might have been a little earlier to, to see where this was going, but by and large, just about every multi-unit restaurant brand was caught sort of uh, on their back foot, trying to respond in terms of creating a presence that serves up what a customer is looking for when they're using this term. So uh, there's a massive opportunity right now that not a lot of brands are really doing a good job of taking advantage of in terms of positioning the brand to win when a customer is doing this kind of search. I think also another reason that restaurant brands have been a little bit slow to move in a real material kind of to go through a digital evolution is because of the fact that traditionally and historically closing the loop on ROI has been really hard. Because unlike a service business, when someone finds you if they're plunk, if they need a toilet fix and they pick up the phone or fill out a form and you can kind of attribute a lead, in most cases, especially if you're fast casual and QSR, somebody finds you online and they walk in the door you can't really connect the dots. Well, things are changing because of a lot of technology, and we'll talk about that. But that is also a trend that uh, technology is solving that problem. So the, the combination of consumer trends, meaning the ROI issue being solved, is, is opening up a, a whole world of opportunity for brands like Wingzone and, and for all you guys. Um, and, and I'm pretty bullish on the fact that the first movers here, like Wingzone, are going to, are going to uh, benefit exponentially. Because again, there's a lot of, not a lot of brands are doing this well today. And if you're not doing it well, if you don't serve up an experience that a customer is expecting and wants to see, especially if they're not familiar with your brand, you're, you're going to lose that opportunity maybe forever. So um, this stat is, is astounding, and I actually think it's, it's over. From the research I've done, I think this is overly optimistic. Uh, only 18% of restaurants have the optimal local branded digital experience, meaning that their presence online both tells the brand story in a way that's compelling and differentiated and also is locally relevant because if I'm looking for a place to eat and even if I think you're and I find your brand and I think you guys look amazing, if you don't tell me right off the bat that you're within the area that I'm willing to go drive from my office or home or my hotel to get a bite to eat or grab a beer or some wings or pizza, then you lose me. So you have to have an experience that's both branded and local, and very few are doing this well. So let's get into the, 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 the sort of four big buckets or components of the things that every multi-unit restaurant brand should be thinking about as it relates to their efforts to win the digital diner. And, and I'm going to go through each one of these individually, and they all kind of tie into each other. So not, one thing I should preface this with, none of this exists in a silo. So each one of these components kind of impacts the next. They all play together in harmony as part of a holistic solution. Your presence online 
nothing exists in the silo, but it's easy to kind of think about this by breaking it down into four different buckets, and then we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll go through each of these and kick it to Matt as far as how he thinks about each as it relates to what he's trying to accomplish at Wing Zone. First and foremost, you need to engage customers with a branded and locally relevant website. So there's, there's unfortunately, and, and I'm sure several of you guys on the phone will probably either laugh and in a sad way or knowingly in a sad way if you have your site set up like this. But most multi-unit brands that I see online are forcing the consumer down two less than ideal paths. If I go to Google and I'm looking for wings near me, burgers near me, tacos in a zip code, hell, people today, they know, they don't even know, they know that they don't even have to put near me. You can just put in burgers. And Google knows that's a local search and will serve up local results. Most multi-unit brands have a homepage that's really thoughtful, that tells a story about the brand, talks about what the values of the brand are, has great looking pictures, really enticing and it's, it's just a well-branded site. If I'm a consumer and I'm looking for a place to get a bite to eat and I find your homepage, great. If it looks phenomenal, tells the story, great. But again, my intent is implicitly local. So if I've already told Google that I'm looking for a place to eat locally and then I find your homepage and have to continually dig around to find the location, if there is even one in my market, you're going to lose a lot of consumers. A lot of people, for every page they have to dig in, you'll lose about a third of visitors. Because people's attention spans are, we have fast twitch brains because of today's crazy multi-device world. I know I've developed ADD over the past decade, and I used to think a lot more linear, linearly than I do now, and we all are sort of victim to this. So you have to, that's a bad path to go. The other extreme is Consumers find a local page, but that page is super thin. It doesn't tell the story about why I should choose you relative to the other myriad of eateries that I can choose, especially ones that I might be more familiar with if you're new to a market. And it is just hours of operation, maybe a map, and that's it. There's nothing brand, there's nothing compelling about the brand. So again, if, if I don't know who you are, I might choose a safer route if I, you don't tell the story. So um, I'm going to kick it to Matt because we're working on, we're, as Matt mentioned, Scorpion and Wingzone are our partners, and Scorpion is helping Matt and his team sort of spearhead a digital evolution of Wingzone, and, and that starts with the site. And Matt, I'll let you sort of cover how you think about your website. Yeah, well, prior to signing on with Scorpion, um, we had actually invested probably close to $40,000 in a new site, and it was done by our uh, creative agency here in Atlanta. Um, I think that it's important that everyone on the call understands that there are designers that create websites because they look good, but there's a whole back end that really is the key functionality of what SEO is all about. You know, we, we created a new site, but yet our SEO search engine optimization rankings within Google and Bing and Yahoo and other ones were sometimes first page, sometimes second page. So one of the things that I learned um, closely with working with Scorpion is that the, the site really needs to, even if it's a similar look and feel to what you want, and we've had the opportunity to work with their designers to make sure that it's what we want to put out to the consumer, but it, you really got to look at it from like a, a car and the engine that um, it runs on. Because if you're not top of mind in um, search engine, like page one, top three, and I'm not talking about sponsored stuff or paid stuff, I'm just talking organic, then your site's really not working well. Um, it did give us an opportunity to work with some talented people there to kind of create a kind of a new look and feel in what we're doing. And, and Justin, you can move to the next slide to just show a little bit about what was done. So it does give you an opportunity to kind of, um, you know, start fresh if you want. If you love your current design, then they'll work with it. One of the things that we, that our franchisees are loving is the fact that it's really about their local page. Okay, so there's wingzone.com, and, and that's fine. But it's really about the individual store. 
and what is important there. And, and if you look at our previous site, um, it's really was there was a menu, there were store hours, there was maybe a map, uh, and that was it. And I think one of the things that helps SEO, um, as well as just creating more content for the consumer, is you know we've got we can add some specials on here for that particular store. We can do a link between Facebook and Instagram. We can tell a little story about the franchisee. All of this is really handled by uh, Scorpion as far as kind of the setup, the design, and then the editing of it from that side. Um, simple for us to do as well, but it's one of the resources that they provided us. Uh, you know, we're not a large company, so I really run the marketing team, but there's only two other people on that side. So we were um, dealing with a, sometimes a lack of resources. So from our side, um, love how we've gone through this. We went through several renditions with them. You know, we were very honest and open about, we really like this, we don't like that. And they were very open and eager to create something dynamic, but something that we really liked. Thanks, Matt. Um, appreciate that. And a, and a few other points to add. M Matt mentioned SEO. So there's there's a benefit. There's kind of the benefit is is uh, multifold here. When you create a website that is both well branded for for not only the brand or the home page, for example, wingzone.com. And by the way, this site is in progress. So if you go check out Wingzone right now, you'll see their their legacy site. This is the site we're transitioning to. So where this is kind of a sneak preview, but. Um, encompassing each one of your stores with its own unique page. It kind of acts and feels like its own website, but it's all anchored to the authority of the, the main brand website. So for example, this might be wingzone.com forward slash Stockton. So there's two things that are beneficial here. Number one, if I am in Stockton or any of the zip codes where, you know, these guys deliver or I can order online or come in and dine at the restaurant or take out. I am seeing both. This is a really well-branded page. It's, the photography looks delicious. It's selling me on Wingzone. And it also makes it really clear and obvious that this is a location that's relevant to me. So it, it both is engaging from a brand perspective and locally relevant. Now, now the second benefit is from an SEO perspective, Google loves to see all these unique pages and unique content and link and all these different photos and stories about each owner. That's a, that's a really SEO rich, really, uh, I call it kind of a juicy website. And now Wingzone's got this really well optimized site where oh, the rising tide raises all the ships and each location has a, a powerful advantage in terms of ranking from an SEO perspective because the site as a whole is built and architected so that each page gets rung up individually for a local consumer. So what I mean, what I say by that, and here's one more item, and I, I, I won't belabor this point any longer, but one more important note to make is the fact that the biggest mistake, or one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of multi-unit brands, restaurant or otherwise, make is that they copy and paste the same content over and over and over on all of their unit or location pages. That, and, and to no fault of their own, because it's just, how else do you do it? How else do you create location pages without saying the same thing? What happens is Google, two things that are detrimental. Google can get confused, because if you have 100 locations and they all say the same thing, Google doesn't know which one to rank. And what can end up happening is that if I'm sitting on one market, Google might mistakenly rank uh, a, a, a location page across the country. And I see that, and I, I'm gone, right? You lose that opportunity because I don't think you're near me. Number two, Google can actually potentially flag you because every web page and every website should have its own unique reason for being. Otherwise, why does it exist? Um, it's why do you copy and paste unless you're trying to cheat? So even if you have the best of intentions, Google can interpret that negatively and flag the site and essentially hurt your ranking. So the way to do it is to ensure that each location page has 100% unique content. I love the way we're doing this for Wingzone, where each individual owner talks about their own uh, their own unique perspective on the brand. It's a great way to scale unique content 
and really give that location an authentic voice of the brand. Uh, and the last piece I'll say on the site before we move to the next bucket is call to action. Create a user experience that drives outcomes that are desirable and measurable. It can't just look phenomenal and, and that be the end of it. So for Matt and WingZone, they drive a lot of revenue through online ordering and it's becoming more and more important as far as the goal of the website and the marketing campaigns that we're executing. And we'll talk more about that. But the site really needs to drive an experience that ultimately, as someone who's visiting that site and someone who's hungry, encourages me and makes it easy for me to understand how to convert. So you have to think not just about look and feel and SEO, but about what do you want people to do when they're on the site and how do you drive that experience that ultimately produces those outcomes. And then this just shows the scale that's required. As you grow, your site will become more and more powerful. So if you just layer in additional forward slash Stockton, forward, wing zone forward slash Dallas, forward slash Gainesville, and that just adds to that SEO power of the site. So the next bucket. Now you've got a great site. It's optimized for local search. It looks great at the brand and the local level. It drives an experience from the consumer perspective that produces outcomes that you want to produce, that you want to measure and, and uh, compel. Now you have to compete to be, on, to be visible. And the, the, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with the term SEO, search engine optimization, and we've mentioned it now a couple times. SEO now extends far beyond just the site in and of itself, and SEO really is now all those different fires you need to have your irons in to be visible online. And really, it's ultimately, it's about managing all the places that you can be discovered and engaged in a way that's proactive, that differentiates the brand, that helps you dominate as much real estate on a Google page as you can, and control the message. If you, if someone searches, if I'm searching for wings in Stockton, and I see wing zone represented in the Google Maps, I see a site for Stockton that's really differentiated, and that appears high, I see it Yelp and Facebook with great reviews, I, there's an exponential chance that I'm going to click on one or two of those links and convert because it's clear to me based upon the authority of Google that WingZone is the premier player in this space, in this market, and that people think great things about WingZone who, who eat at the, you know, patronize them. So that's really the goal is to manage all those different outlets. The one I want to talk about most, uh, sort of spend the most time focusing on today, and I think it's part of the basic blocking and tackling for a multi-unit brand is to optimize your local data, your local business information. Some of you might have heard it referred to as the NAP, name, address, phone number. So when you do a search for any really local business today, especially restaurants, and I can talk about why, but especially restaurants, more so than a lot of business categories, you will most typically see, if not the very first, you know, quarter or third of the top of the page, sometimes half, you'll see that map section with the icons of restaurants that fit the, fit the category. You have to manage this. And you, you, you most times can't leave it up to your franchisees to do it because they don't understand how to do it and it just confuses them, it's intimidating, and it's never going to happen. So there has to be consistency in terms of all the places your local business information can be cited, and that includes Google, Yelp, Facebook, um, and a lot of other, probably a hundred different places that are a little smaller, City Search, yellowpages.com, all the places, Bing, Yahoo, it has to be consistent, it has to be comprehensive, meaning you have to be in all those places. And it has to be fresh, meaning your data needs to be pushed on a regular basis. This is something a lot of people don't think about, but if you, if you think about why, there's so much turnover in small business communities. Businesses open their doors and show, close their doors every day that if that data about your business information is stale, if Google and their algorithm sees that that data has not been refreshed recently, it's not as valid as a competitor with fresh data. So uh, I, I tell those, and, and it has to be controlled, but Matt, I want, I want to hear your, your perspective on, on your, your local business data and maps. 
Well, listen, I really believe that it takes almost a full-time job to be keeping up with everything. Um, we found that we were incredibly inconsistent, even among the big sites. You know, if you take Google, Yahoo, Bing, uh, but there's hundreds of directory listings, just making sure that the phone number is correct, that the pictures are updated. Um, the other thing that Scorpion's really helped us with is really getting ownership and access to our um, Google My Business pages, and that's important. Um, we want our franchisees to have access to it, but we wanted to <clears throat> really own it to make sure that we're managing the correct um, uh, images and information. You know, it, it, we had a few locations that had a picture of, uh, you know, the back of a restaurant or a dumpster or something like how did it get on there I have no idea how it got on there but cleaning that stuff up is very very important um, and I just think that it's it's a nice tool that they're able to kind of um, manage or outsource for us from that side uh, it's not something a franchisee is ever going to want to do they probably don't always see the value of it but for us it was important from a consistency standpoint uh, I was unaware as to the amount of listings that are out there. I thought it was maybe five in a market, you know, but there's there's actually, uh, there can be a hundred, there can be over a hundred, and all those listings that you have help your search um, and allow you to kind of uh, be top of mind from that side. Remember, all the things that, that I'm mentioning are really, other than the the, the sign up cost and the monthly cost there's really no cost to it so this is not direct display advertising this is really just managing what's out there and um, for us it was really about consistency and we were not doing a very good job of really managing that consistency store to store market to market of what was online yeah Matt I'm glad that you uh, that was a really good point the fact that you mentioned that this is not about you know, kind of feeding the, the 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 beast and paying incrementally for advertising. This is really about super good point. This is about creating an asset that ultimately is an annuity. You know, you you create an infrastructure and you manage your presence in such a way that you're you know it doesn't require this ongoing media cost, but you're doing so in a way that creates long-term value because now that you when you manage this. You've got an asset online that positions each and every one of your franchisees to compete locally. It actually is a part of a, a selling point. Um, hey, if you become a Wing Zone franchise owner, we plug you in from day one with a site that's engaging, it's optimized for local search, we manage your local listings, and I'm going to get to reviews here in a minute, but all those things are, are like Matt said, just, just things you have to manage, but do not require ongoing costs from a media perspective. Uh, so good point. Let's go to the next topic here. So, and again, it's the ba I call it the basic blocking and tackling of your online presence. Website, manage your local data and listings, and uh, and you guys all know how important customer reviews are. And and reviews are something you have to actively manage. And I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna shut up here pretty soon because this is something I know Matt is really passionate about. But reviews, there's a lot of different ways to manage reviews. If you have a loyalty club, you know that those folks are predisposed to be really big fans of the brand. So you want to nudge those customers to leave you good reviews, compel them to go out to the public web, reduce the friction that's required for them to go out and leave your review on Google or Yelp or Facebook. To the degree that you can collect customer data, you want to, even if they're a first-time customer, if they're converting an offer. Only for first-time customers, collect that data. Ask how their experience was. If it's great, compel them to sign up for the loyalty club. Ask them then to leave you a great review online. If it's not good, listen and be responsive to folks who are not happy. I know from speaking from a consumer perspective, if I voice a complaint to a restaurant and they are responsive, I'm heard and they rectify it, I go from being a detractor to being an evangelist. Because a lot of times, if I just have a pretty good experience, meh, I come and go, that's great. But if I have a bad one and, and the manager shows that he cares, he or she cares, and makes it right, that really sticks out in my mind. You, could turn your, you can turn those folks into your biggest champion. 
Um, so I want to kick this to Matt again because I know he's he's really passionate about this topic and, and how he thinks about reviews for wind dumps. So by the way, I don't think we've lost it. No one's no one's logged off yet, so I don't think we're boring people too much. But, uh, <laughs> not too bad so far. So here are the facts, okay? Whether you agree with online reviews or not, they're real. People believe what they read, or a large percentage of people do. Uh, at WingZone, we really lacked a system of knowing when reviews came out. Uh, were franchisees responding to both positive and negative reviews? Um, so we kind of really swept it under the rug. You know, there are other systems out there that can do this as well, but that's kind of a, a one-off thing. This is, to me, an extra perk that Scorpion really brings to the table. I want to be clear, though, that um, their model in this is about data. Okay, it's about you got a review in real time on Google. Uh, how many reviews did you get last month? How many had responses? Did your um, reviews increase in uh, stars, so to speak. So for us, when we get a review in real time, we're notified, the FBC is notified, the franchisee is notified, but it is up to the franchisee individually to respond. Now we keep a close eye on, well, how quickly did they respond and, and what was their response. So for us, that was very positive. The other thing is, for some reason, we don't get a lot of Yelp reviews. We get a lot of Google. We get a lot of Facebook. Um, but Scorpion has a pretty cool system where it really helps drive some of the reviews up. And it's legit. It's not, you know, bogus. So post an order, within about 48 hours, the customer is going to get either a text or an email saying, hey, just want to ask you a couple simple questions about your experience. If they give us four or five stars, there's a follow-up of, hey, would, would you review us on one of these sites? Great. If it's a one or two star, then it's another opportunity for us to at least acknowledge what happened, maybe reach out to the customer, or at least use it as a training opportunity. Um, so to us, um, this is an awesome tool. I also think that it puts the onus on franchisees to respond, which I happen to believe is the right strategy. Ultimately, it's their business. If it was a corporate store, then one of my managers would respond. Um, currently, the way that we know about a review is we randomly hit Google, like, let me Google the store, and, you know, oh, they got a review last week. And, and I just think that um, some brands do a great job of this, and others like us had done a poor job of it. So um, the goal is to utilize this, whether it's kind of legit or not, to utilize positive reviews to drive uh, additional orders. And that's exactly what our focus is right now. Thanks, Matt. And uh, by the way, we're just one more section, and then we're going to get into your questions. And again, encourage you to, if anything comes up, fire away in the questions section here. Um, here's probably for me as kind of a, an internet uh, marketing geek. I, I always there's a Wayne Gretzky quote I like, and it's you know always skate where the puck is headed, not where it is. And that's kind of a philosophy that I, I that excites me. It's always what's next and being in digital marketing, it's always about what, what's next. It changes almost daily. There's, there's something new and emerging. So I, I, I alluded to this at the beginning of the call, and that's the fact that I think in large part because marketing attribution has been really a challenge for QSRs and fast casual restaurants. A primary reason why, as an industry, there's been a slow sort of uh, slower move to adopt digital as a means of customer acquisition. I know that restaurants primarily think about digital in terms of visibility, social media, apps, but again, as it relates to acquiring customers, it's really been a challenge to close the loop. So there's, there's things today that are making this, this, this challenge now an opportunity, and, and, and so what was before a fantasy now is becoming a reality, and that's true marketing attribution. Uh, there is some cool technology that 
you know, that I'm still learning about, frankly, as it relates to uh, using technology to, to tie in people who walk physically into your door with visibility and engagement online. Scorpion is one of Google's largest partners in the world. They're doing some pretty cool stuff. And in some cases, we're looking about piloting with customers with what's called beacons, where you put a physical device on a wall and use that for all kinds of things. If somebody walks into your door, we can actually tie that back to having seen you online over the past many weeks. Really exciting stuff. But ultimately, you need, as a franchisor, line of sight, and you need to consolidate all of your marketing data into one place so that you can see whether or not your franchisees are engaging, ensuring that messaging is on point, it's on brand across the enterprise, whether it's regional, whether it's brand level, whether it's hyper-local, identifying what's working and what's not digitally so that you can get rid of the things that don't work and quickly scale those successes that happen in one market across the enterprise. And digital advertising is also making attribution something that more exciting and real and real a reality more so than ever before. You know, a lot of the bigger brands that we, we talk to have these co-ops and regional buying funds where they're still going analog. They're essentially quote unquote plus upping the brand dollars and you know spending more on local TV, local radio, and not moving those dollars into the much more targeted, much more measurable digital channels. So there's a ton of opportunity here, but where I wanna I want to get Matt pick Matt's brain is as it relates to online ordering. And this to me, when when Wingzone and Scorpion first kind of got together, the thing that excited me, you know, in addition to Matt being a really progressive thinker, is the fact that they drive so much business via online ordering and delivery over the phone so we can measure those things. And, you know, a decade ago, 15 years ago, when you would talk to a company about the website, usually it was their chief technology officer or chief information officer making those decisions. The website was looked at as a piece of a technology asset. Now today it's commonly regarded as a marketing tool. So that's where online ordering is today. Online ordering is typically a, looked at as an operational tool or asset, not as a marketing tool, and it really needs to be, because I, I arguably the most exciting part of the whole Wingzone project is the fact that we are tying in the website and all the digital engagement with online ordering so that we can show every single transaction, the revenue, the customer data about who bought that, those, that order of you know, a dozen wings and a two liter bottle of Pepsi. We can tie the, those transactions back to the marketing channel and referring source that drove that to help us learn about what works and what doesn't. And we can show franchisees the return on their investment and actual revenue generated. So Matt, I know, and again, I know this is something you're passionate about, so love your take on this. Well, listen, uh, we are primarily in the takeout delivery business. We do dine-in as well, but about 35% of our revenue comes via online ordering. And Probably one of the biggest challenges for us is trying to figure out, well, how did that, how did we get that order? You know, did they uh, Google something? Did they get an ad? Did they do this? Some of the hardest things for us to grasp with our uh, move to Scorpion was how do we um, determine how we got that order? And I know it's a little bit high level stuff, but they work closely with our point of sale provider. And there's what's called a session ID that's created when someone clicks on an ad or how they got to wingzone.com in order to place an order. The cool thing about it is that most, that's not that abnormal that that can be done, but a lot of times it ends there. So an ad is placed, someone clicks on it, and it takes you to a certain website. And so to the business owner, they don't know if they got the sale, how much did they spend, did they call, did they, you know, what did they do once they got there? Well, we're able to take it all the way through order. And to me, just driving people to the site is not really credible. It's did we get the sale and how much did they spend? Um, now, a few things that we had to get our arms around a little bit is that you had to, to set up distinguished things like 
uh, a, a different phone number. Now we still have our phone numbers in our stores and still on our print material, but when we're doing advertising and it says click to order or or, um, or call to order, it was a unique phone number that's tracked to our store to know that it, it went that way. So uh, they've got some talented people there. I don't. I don't. Um, uh, I'm not telling you that I'm an expert in uh, technology on that side, but they were very helpful in trying to figure out how to get there. Because every single one of us wants to be able to determine uh, what was the ROI on a particular investment or marketing spend. And I think that we've all gotten caught up in, especially in social media, by saying, oh, I spent $200 on this sponsored post and I got 3,000 likes. That's wonderful. How much, how much business did you get out of it? Well, I have no idea. So it's very interesting as you're able to kind of dissect it down to an actual order. Yeah. Um, and Matt, the one thing I'll add before we get to the Q&A portion of, of today's webinar, and I, again, something I know you're, you're particularly passionate about is understanding who your customer is and how to message to them. So one of the other sort of side benefits of, or additional benefits of the, the tracking at that user level as it relates to what they ordered online is capturing that data. And then every time they come back, we're able to sort of continually quantify the lifetime value of the customer and kind of continually ringing up that ROI to show your franchisees as, hey, this is not a cost to you, but actually producing material value. Dollars and cents is the best way to communicate to a franchisee. Clicks and impressions, it's just a bunch of vanity techno babble. Um, but secondly, leveraging that data in a meaningful way. So just like I talked about SEO, the, the old paradigm is it's just your website. Now it's all the places you can be online. Email marketing, the old way of thinking is sending your customers email. Today it's capturing email addresses and then using that data matching it up with the recency and frequency of your customer and their buying habits and getting customized ad campaigns so that if Michael Smith was a regular customer and hasn't come in in, in 60 days putting together a, custom, a segment and advertising on Facebook so that Michael Smith says, we love you, we miss you, here's a 25% order off on your next order because we have that data pretty sophisticated stuff, but it's becoming more and more of a reality. It's the new email marketing. That, is there anything you want to add about that? Um, listen, that, that's pretty technical stuff as to how to market to people uh, post-order. Um, I, I will tell you that we still haven't solved all the pieces of it, but I think that what I think is important just to mention is that there is there's a few things to look at. Obviously, there's acquisition or getting new customers in, and then there's retention of of customers and I think as uh, people in marketing and and all kind of in a competitive environment is we got to balance both of them and I think that um, a lot of what we're our attention is about the retention marketing how do we market to those people post an order or post 30 days or 60 days um, and I think that data is key on that I think there's um, you know, Scorpion's got a, a, a pretty good system on marketing to people upon first order. We're working with them on some possible opportunities down the road of of uh, kind of retention post that. But we're, use, we're currently using a third party outside of Scorpion to market to people uh, for more of retention, uh, let's say, 30, 60, 90 days away. Awesome. So the four big buckets, the four components, and by the way, everyone on the call, this, this recording is going to be available post-conference. We'll send it all to you. So if there's anyone on your team or anyone you know of who you think might be interested in this content, absolutely feel free to share. Um, I also want to encourage folks to contact myself or Michael. Uh, if anything comes up, we still have some time for you guys to input your questions, but we've got a few here that we want to hit. But again, Website, the four big buckets, the blocking and tackling, a great site that's locally relevant and optimized for visibility. 
managing all the ways that you can drive exposure and that you don't have to pay for in terms of media, you know, proactively being responsive to and managing reviews and encouraging happy customers to be, go out there and tell the world about their experience with you. And then attribution, marketing reporting. By the way, one thing to add to that, today's reporting allows you to make some pretty cool correlations. Even if it's not totally black and white, if you know that, for example, 30% spike in people who are clicking on your menus or directions has resulted in a, and you get store level revenue data, you can overload, lay those two metrics to start making correlations. So even without a perfect one-to-one -one closing of the loop, there are still ways to, to start matching up online engagement with actual uh, spikes in revenue. So let's get into some questions. Michael, I'll, I'll kick it over to you. You're fielding the questions here. Yeah, yeah. And huge, huge thanks to Matt and Justin. That was, that was a great presentation, full of a lot of great information and just some really valuable stuff. So thanks, thanks to both of you guys for that. Um, so getting into the Q&A portion of the webinar, it's not too late to enter a question if you have one. Uh, just please enter them in the questions field on the GoToWebinar widget, and then we'll try and field as many of these as we can with the time we've got left. So first question we have right now, looks like it comes from Andy and Matt. I think that Andy's directing this question to you. Uh, Andy asks, how are you funding WingZone's digital press projects? Uh, we, are, we made a decision that we were going to use uh, our ad fund for this. So we worked with our Franchise Advisory Council. The upfront was funded on that, and then the monthly fees that the stores that are, is a per store fee is funded on that. Now, additionally, depending on a launch, let's say in February we're going to do some big promotion. We may allot a certain amount of money into a system-wide digital spend, but in general, there are account reps, call them salespeople at Scorpion, that will work with franchisees on their budget. Okay, so. Let's say, and then it's, it's totally an opt-in deal. You have a franchise that says, listen, I want to spend 500 a month digitally or 1,000 a month digitally. Okay, they work directly with Scorpion on how to spend that. If we have franchisees that want to spend none, it's okay. But uh, the monthlies uh, are something that we funded out of uh, the marketing uh, fund. Okay, great, uh, great answer. So we've got, uh, we've got another question here from Catherine. Catherine's asking, my brand just launched a new app. How do you see apps fitting into all of this? Justin, why don't you, uh, why don't you take a stab at this? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, I don't know. Uh, some of my opinions about apps, I think, depends on how you leverage the app. Um, here's the thing that, and I hope this isn't too provocative here, but the thing that I always uh, kind of glance sideways at is when people talk about how folks who use an app come a lot more frequently, spend a lot more, average ticket is, you know, X percent more than, than the typical customer. So my question is always, is that, is that because of the app or is that more a correlation? Are they using the app? Did they download the app in the first place because of the fact that they're a power customer? I know for me, there have been a handful, I can probably count them on one hand of, of restaurant brands that I have patronized so regularly that I've, I've downloaded an app. Because the, the real estate on my phone is valuable. I'm almost out of memory. I have to constantly, like, remove things to, to keep up. And I have to be a really big fan. And, and I will say that some of those brands, who shall remain un, unnamed, are cannibalizing revenue because I would have still gone to them just as frequently, but now they're throwing discounts my way. So they're actually costing themselves money because I'm an app user. So, you know, it really all depends on how you leverage an app. There is, if you add value to my experience, maybe special item menu items that I get a preview for or certain things that just that make my experience with you a more of a premium one and more unique and special, I think that's, that's a, a, an interesting way to engage a customer rather than throwing a discount. I don't know, Matt, do you have an opinion about apps? Um, listen, I, I do, but it's it's specific to our brand. Okay, we our frequency of order is maybe once every three weeks, once a month for a customer. So they're not going to download an app for us. We've we've realized that quickly. We have an app, but truly, it's not really an app. It's just a wraparound or a placeholder for the mobile site. I believe that in our business, our mobile presence 
is the most important thing versus an app or versus a desktop presence. Sixty percent of our of our um, searches as well as our orders are via a mobile app, meaning from a phone. <clears throat> um, listen, I think if you're a brand that has frequency and you're tying in loyalty or payment, I like it. Um, you would be surprised as you survey people, just random people, whoever you think your, cons your consumer is, and saying, what restaurant apps do you have on your phone? Most, a lot of people would say none. Maybe they have one. You know, it's probably a Starbucks or a Dunkin' or something like that. But, um, you know, maybe it's a Grubhub or an Uber Eats these days. But in general, um, we are not investing in an app. Um, we have one, but it is a holder for the actual mobile site. So that's kind of just our opinion on it. I'm not saying that for some other brands it doesn't make tremendous sense. The other thing is there can be some sticker shock on what a true app costs, you know. And we were not prepared to spend fifty grand, a hundred grand on some amazing uh, app experience. So I think we're going to kind of end it now, um, and uh, I'm sure you can send uh, Justin or myself an email or anyone else. So appreciate the time today. Happy holidays to everyone.